Hi, Wally. How are you doing today? Uh, yeah, good. Thanks, Gilbert. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good talking yeah, to you. Yeah, thank you for joining us uh, to update the story. We interviewed you uh, a bit about two years ago. Maybe you can refresh uh, the memory with some of our audience here about your, your overview of FYI resources. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, so uh, it has been a little while, so uh, great for the opportunity to catch up and, and um, give you an update on a few things. So so about this time two years ago, we had uh, really just completed our second uh, DFS study for our HPA uh, project. Uh, that was a fantastic outcome for us, really, I suppose, uh, based on about 10,000 tonnes per annum output of uh, HPA. We produced an NPV of around just over $1 billion US and an IRR of over 55%. So quite incredible um, uh, metrics uh, for investment for investors. So um, yeah, based based on that, uh, we decided to uh, proceed with our um, investment decision. And uh, around about that time, um, we had been discussing um, potential investment by uh, Alcoa. We managed to attract them to our uh, our study and uh, development group through um, those metrics. I suppose the the proposal for a joint venture with Alcoa was the, they were going to take sixty five percent for their investment of about 240 odd million dollars US uh, and to manage the project uh, and we were to uh, take a, um, a, a management role at the 35% and proceed towards uh, production. They wanted to differ our DFS studies slightly by putting or uh, inserting a demonstration phase uh, in between our pilot plant, which is the, the basis of the body of the work that attracted them in the first place. Um, and our commercial uh, production. So, so we, we we proceeded on that. Unfortunately, um, over the sort of the sixteen months that uh, the JV was um, in development, um, the Alco had slightly different uh, objectives in terms of development and their timeline, um, and probably their cost base and overall direction of the company. So, or of the project at least. So, so we had to dissolve that. It was a tough decision. We, you know, we we'd had done some good work together. Um, they're a good group to to work with, but unfortunately, the difference between a big company and a little company and and the, the re retrospective uh, objectives in terms of getting into development were just too vast. So we had to make the tough decision. Um, so we reverted back uh, uh, to our hundred uh, percent FYI, and um, now we're uh, uh, embarking on the journey uh, on our own hundred percent. So it's really back to plan A for us based on the plans for the DFS. Um, but we're very excited about that and and uh, quite happy to be in control of our destiny. Yeah, let's talk yeah. about something about the, the recent uh, developments. This is one of the your optimization of your HPA project. So can you share some highlights of this? And also what's the you know plan now moving forward with this uh, after this optimization? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, look, a key point, uh, and this is where we sit at the moment. Uh, we, we have only just dissolved uh, the Alcoa uh, Joint Development Agreement. So, um, essentially, we're going to embark on uh, the development 100% uh, FYI uh, and and the um, supporting groups and services that we have around us. Uh, and so, we're going to do uh, an optimized uh, approach, slightly different to what uh, our Alcoa was proposing. So, it'll be shorter in timeline. Uh, sh uh, shorter in capital, but be more effective and more tailor-made to approach to market. So the speed to market is the key thing for us um, and tailoring uh, the HBA product to the various uh, marketing groups, the off-takers that we've been building uh, critical relationships with. Uh, and we see that's an, an imperative. So uh, yeah, there is an announcement out a little while ago about our optimization. So I won't go into that in detail, but it does provide a bit of an outline as to our approach and our timeline, but very different from the Alcoa approach and something that we see is a little bit more effective in terms of uh, capital uh, time schedule and, and a whole lot of other things to, to, to zero in on, on getting to, to market quickly. You also recently announced sort of a strategy on the critical minerals where you'll go into where of uh, why do you choose to do that? And uh, can you can you you know tell us a bit about the acquisition details on uh, Minhub? Yeah, absolutely. So we're super excited about that, as we are as the HPA. Uh, the HPA will re remain our core focus, uh, and we're absolutely dedicated towards that. 
But we just thought that there was a fantastic opportunity to get into the rare earth space. Um, there's, uh, a, based on a few relationships that we'd had, we'd been developing uh, a somewhat of a strategy in the rare earths. It's not um, a uh, exploration or um, uh, a development uh, project as such. It's more downstream. And that's what um, excited us. It was something that um, lent to our experience and and uh, capabilities that we've been developing over the HPA, and we thought we could apply this to rare earth. So in our minds, it made a lot of sense. And of course, there's a lot of tailwind um, in the market about um, you know e-mobilization and, and the decarbonisation going on around the world. That certainly applies for the HPA, but certainly also applies for the rare earth. So. Um, under the critical minerals banner, we, we like to see ourselves as critical mineral developers, uh, and we have a lot of support uh, regarding that. But that was something that we thought that was uh, opportunistic, uh, and we saw certainly, uh, um, uh, I suppose, a niche in the market uh, to, to uh, sort of, uh, attempt to try and fill out uh, a very robust uh, strategy. So. Uh, the deal around itself, we we think it's actually a quiet deal, a uh, very good deal. The, the the vendor of those assets actually is very familiar with uh, FYI and our HPA. So they are very keen to uh, do a stock deal um, because they're excited about the HPA future. We're very excited about uh, uh, the rare earths. So it made sense to do um, a, a stock deal. So uh, we, we're going through um, a bit of a, uh, an exercise now through an option of period, but we're about to sign, I think, uh, the closure of that and embark on our DFS. So we have a 12-month program to develop this uh, the rare earths in collaboration with a very large rare earths company down here in Australia called Arafura. Stock code is RAU. Uh, and together we're going to develop um, a, a very interesting downstream uh, mineral sands and rare earth production uh, unit uh, and something that um, uh, is, is pretty exciting given the tailwinds of the market, as I mentioned. Great to hear. So can you talk a bit about any uh, uh, of your information on your, any uh, strategic partner or, or how about your, your relationship you know, with the government? Are you closely uh, have the support with the various government? Yes, yes, we do. Look, um, we've been in this game for a little while, so we, we do have a lot, a lot of friends, I suppose, to speak. We have some strategic partnerships, um, certainly um, throughout the, the value chain, um, uh, and we see uh, that these are very critical to the development, not only of the HPA project, uh, but also the rare earths. So under the rare earths, yes, we do have some strategic partners, including uh, off-takers um, and um, um, various bodies in between. The rare earths, we, we're just embarking on that, but we already have some fantastic uh, support there. And, and to your point, yeah, most of that uh, support is actually we get, we're receiving quite incredible support from the government, both in WA, um, in Northern Territory here in, in Australia, but also our federal government. So we, we're recognised through a number of status um, marks, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's... Um, uh, Federally, we have um, major project status, and in WA, we have lead agency status. Okay, and I want to leave you with a, a very important question where, let's say, the audience were probably asking, because HPA is still your core, but it's, it's hard to find any comparable in, in the industry and the market. Do you, can you share some some thoughts on this one? Is there any like bigger companies or, or any peers that they could relate your business to? Yeah, certainly. Um, uh, look, it's probably important to put a bit of context around that question. Uh, most of the HPA is currently produced in China, so probably through groups that most people wouldn't know. Um, second tier to that is uh, some very large uh, Japanese and uh, uh, North Asian groups, um, such as Sumitomo. They're probably the largest higher quality, higher priced um, producers. Through our um, development of the HPA, we're hoping to innovate uh, that production because it is quite costly, um, but the purity is a key measure there. Um, so uh, we're hoping to do a bit of a disruptive uh, approach to the production of this material. It's very important to have it, the quality as well as the price. Uh, our innovative process fits nicely in that. So 
So we do, we do have some peers, but we're likely to disrupt them and they're, they're the rather larger group. But there is a new wave of production of HPA coming through that um, is addressing the market shortfalls that seem to be appearing in, um, in certain forecasts. And so there, there are a number of peers that we, we'd probably measure ourselves against. Uh, everyone's slightly different, coming from a different approach, uh, different feedstocks, for example, different processing routes, and therefore different cost bases. Uh, we see ourselves as fairly unique in that regard. Um, you know, we are probably uh, bottom uh, tier in terms of our capex and uh, our opex, so we're very, very competitive. But um, yeah, look, there are a few uh, Australian listed uh, groups that are seen as peers. Yeah, it's really exciting times ahead for FYI. Uh, it's always nice uh, talking to you, Wally, on uh, to, and especially this time sharing your update with us. No, thank you. Thank you very much for your time, Gilbert. It's great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.